My name is Eugene Mazo and I'm the CEO of DigiLogic. DigiLogic provides technology for enabling rapid IOE application development. Today at Cisco Live, we're demoing our technology and how it applies to developing IOE applications extremely rapidly in a drag and drop fashion. We play in a lot of different verticals, including oil and gas, intelligent buildings, smart cities, agriculture, data centers. What I have here is the DigiLux environment itself. It's fully HTML5. It runs right in the browser without having to install any software on any computer. We have all of the tools that can be used to draw custom shapes. There's different components that can be just dragged right onto the stage, whether it's gauges, whether it's Google Maps. All of these different data sources and, and devices that produce data can be brought into DigiLux itself and then utilized to build these applications. So what we have is a number of different devices that you'll see on our demo board here, all talking their own protocols that are brought into the IOE ecosystem that DigiLux supports. What we also have is a browser on a mobile device. This browser, DSLink, has access to all of the phone parameters. Here's my geolocation information, latitude, longitude. Here's my accelerometer information. You can see the data is live and extremely fast. So what I'm able to do is just drag on an image of an iPhone here, drag that right onto the stage. Instead of writing CSS code, I have the property inspector here that allow me to adjust whatever content is on the stage. So I can just take my alpha and actually bind it to rotation. As soon as I do that, everything becomes live. I'll bind two more values there, and you can see now I have the full 3D. Real applications are going to need logic as well, so I need a lot more tools to be able to transform the data to show it in a relevant way. So what we have for that is something that we call data flow, which is essentially block programming. And you'll see that here we have a full library of all of the different function blocks that are available to be utilized and to create logic. When this phone turns over, I want to show the back of the phone on the application. So I'm going to take this point, drag it right onto the data flow here. All of the data is always live, so you don't have to compile, you don't have to see if you're doing something wrong. You can see it right away. I'm going to use an absolute block to absolute this value. Drag that on here, bind this value right into the input. It's all continues to be live. From the output of this if block, bind it directly to the URL of the image component in there. So now I've just created an application that gives me a 3D there. How do I now affect the physical world with this? Using the same visual programming, I'm going to control this light over here. So I'm going to expand my data tree here, which will give me the connection to that light bulb. So I can control this light bulb directly from here. I can invoke an action to actually turn it off. So what I want to do is actually control that with the phone. Instead of using the paths here, I'm going to say when the phone is face up, set the value to true. When the phone is face down, set the value to false. As I switch the phone over, you see the light comes off. As I switch it face up, it comes on. And as you can imagine, the logic can get a lot more sophisticated, a lot more uh, can be done in terms of the UI, as well as controlling different data points using the, the various data that's available within the ecosystem.